right? Similar to a slide I did earlier in this video, the idea is we've got all these representations, one, two, three, four, five different represent, well, really it's four representations plus, you know, understanding how the relationship is with the next whole number. And so we have these four different representations and we want to be able to start with any one of those representations and fill in the remaining three. So you've got a right here, it's in fraction form, four and six tenths. So the decimal t form would be 4.6. In expanded form, we get a choice of fraction or decimal. So I will do four plus six tenths because I like fractions and then in as a number line so what two whole numbers is 4.6 gonna live between well it's gonna live between uh, 4 and 5 so there is our two whole numbers that it lives between now where is 4 and 6 tenths gonna live specifically so here's 4 so it's going to be one-tenth, two-tenths, three-tenths, four-tenths, five-tenths. Five-tenths is right in the middle. And then plus six-tenths. So it's going to be right here. And that is where 4.6 or four and six-tenths is going to live. And then the question is how much further till the next whole number? And it's going to be four-tenths. So if we wanted to write that in, we would say it is yeah, for this whole uh, chart, I think what I'll do is let's take a look at this expanded notation right here. So if we look at it, I'm going to zoom in. So right here, we've got six copies of 10. So we're going to think of that as 60. We're going to think of three copies of one as three. And we're going to think of six copies of one tenth as six tenths. So what is that as our fraction? That'll be 63 and 6 tenths. So what is that going to be as our decimal? It'll be 63.6. And then how are we going to locate that on our number line? Well, what two whole numbers does this 63.6 live between? Well, it lives between... 63 and 64 and then we want 6 tenths so that means we're going to start here at 63 and then it's 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths right there so I lost my track right, right there 6 tenths so that is what is that 63.6 and that's also 63 and 6 tenths. How much more do we need until we get to the next whole number? Well, it's four tenths. All right. And that's the idea. You know what? I just noticed. Let's do B because B is a, a location first. So we've done, let's start. So we've done first starting with a fraction. We've started with Expanded form. Now let's start with the number line. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And the idea is, first off, what is our decimal? Well, it lives between 24 and 25. So we know it's going to be 24 point something. So now we need to count. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. So it's smack dab in the middle. So that's 24 Point five, 24 and 5 tenths. And when I say it that way, that immediately tells me the fraction is going to be 24 and 5 tenths. And then what is that going to look like in expanded form? Well, we have two copies of 10. That gives us the 20. Plus we have four copies of 1. That gives us the the 4 in 24 plus, and I'm going to zoom in here, plus we have five copies of a tenth. So we have five copies of a tenth. And remember, I could have called that 0 0.1 or 0 0.1, but I'm going to call it one tenth. And there 
is our expanded form. And that wraps up fourth grade module six, lesson three, representing decimals and fractions, mixed decimals and fractions in a variety of ways. Place value, disks, number line, and expanded form. All right, so what I'd like for us to do is I want you to practice this work by going onto your iReady account and I want you to practice um, the assigned lessons that you have for decimals. And then what I would like you to do afterwards is also um, log into your Zern account and completing um, the independent practice for lesson three. Keep in mind, you always have the option to go back to the guided practice if you want um, additional uh, support, you can always go back to the guided practice. Use your tools, reach out to peers over the phone or through Google Classroom, and make certain to self-assess your work. Once you're done, I want you to make certain that you are completing the exit ticket for the test. So go back into the instruction uh, part of the lesson in Google Classroom, and I want you to click on the exit ticket and complete the exit ticket. Remember, please do not complete the exit ticket until you feel confident that you fully understood or you feel under, uh, that you've understood enough to complete the exit ticket. All right, have a good day.